Hello, so hi let's everybody. Start. Coming here to our second Dome Talk in Rome at the Global Forum for Modern Direct Democracy. In this moment, I don't know what's the great problem, but there is the police, there is the security, and not everybody come inside to us because there's another demonstration. So we will start in this little group, and we want to talk about Europe, about the future of Europe, about the future of the democracy, what is important. Only one moment there is the police, it's so loud. In the whole days we, we are talking about democracy, direct democracy uh, over the world. But now here on this place we have a special look for, for Europe. Oh, and. Um, Many people say Europe is uh, has a, in a crisis, crisis, so and we we can we can go on and how to discuss. And at first, I would like to say we make a little little round, and everybody can say his name and maybe his first uh, inspiration, his first uh, uh, things what he what he thinks about the future of the democracy. We have two mi microphones. And the microphone's only for the for the video, not for make it louder. And so we want that you look for the other people. We make not a big uh, 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 what's the name of uh, We are starting looking, talking together. Yes, my name is Jörg. I'm from Cologne, from More Democracy. And now we make the way on the left side. Please tell your name and the first statement. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tommaso. I come from uh, L'Aquila, but actually I am living in uh, Pescara after the earthquake. I am here uh, just because this morning I, I saw in the media that there was this forum and uh, I just want to participate because uh, since a long time I am, uh, I am bringing up my idea that we never have any change in Italy or in Europe if uh, we don't uh, replace the system. I mean, the problem I believe are the politicians and my idea is very simple, is to replace the politician with uh, retired people. The case of Italy is that we have uh, 300,000 uh, retired people uh, every year of all profession which they could uh, handle right the, uh, the country because they they have no more greed because uh, you don't have to pay them because they have uh, already they get their pension you don't have to choose them because uh, they come out every year from uh, the list uh, of the social security And, and therefore, it would be very, very simple just to replace all politicians, which overall in Italy are 170,000. I mean, from the, the smallest municipality up to the parliament. Then we would have no problem. That is the, the idea I am bringing up. Hello, my name is Michael Plein. I'm coming from Germany. The city of Remscheid. This is a smaller bit louder, please. The city of Remscheid is a smaller city near Cologne, so 20, 30 kilometers. And I'm coming uh, in my role as agent for freedom. So I founded with my colleague Thomas over there the agency for freedom, and we are researching what freedom means and in this context I think uh, about the question what is Europe and democracy my first short statement could be for me the, the, EU, the EU is not Europe and the EU is not democracy it's not what I understand there And um, maybe I'm right with that statement, maybe I'm false, we will see. 
Yes, my name is um, Rabban Daniel Fuhrmann. I come from Germany, from the south of Germany, Constance. <coughs> and um, one of my projects while I'm here is the Academy on a Learning Democracy, where we um, are just currently starting the so-called House Parliament, the Home Parliament, and this is especially a tool which is specific for the European Union. I designed it some years ago because the problem with Europe is that we have so many languages, that's good, but it's um, difficult to make uh, something like a common deliberation and so the idea is very simple that um, politics come to your home, that you make a parliament at your home in the language you want. And so for me the future of Europe is um, it's crucial. I think that um, Europe only will be possible as a very or say divergent, um, yes, pluralistic um, society, and for that we need very participatory, um, yes, um, how say, um, subsidiary structures and 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 methods. Well, I'm Patrick. I'm came there from Brno in the Czech Republic, south of the Czech Republic. Mm. Um, uh, and I'm there because um, I believe that the uh, way to the future is more democracy. So direct democracy, rise, new rise of democracy because uh, there are many people who said um, we, we have too much democracy and I, I can't agree with it. So I search for base uh, leading, leading to the future. Um, after years of efforts, I I think uh, we we don't uh, want to destroy destroy old structures. M uh, better is improve the old structures. I think. I'm Thomas uh, from Solingen in Germany. It's a city uh, near Cologne. And uh, if I think about uh, the. Uh, Europe or the European community, uh, I think of many advantages we had during the last uh, decades. When I was young uh, and I came to Italy, I had to cross the border, I had to show my passport, I had to open the car to s show whether I have something to declare or something like that and we had to pay in lira and that was not very comfortable. All this is gone, now the, the thing, these things are better, but nevertheless I think that the 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 idea of uh, bringing Europe together as a as a as a new kind of union, uh, this idea has to be rebuilt, and uh, the way we do it now has come to an end. And my question is, how can we rebuild the idea of Europe? My name is. <laughs> you are right. <laughs> you have an identity finally. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Gerhard Schuster. Um, I'm connected with the European Public Sphere project, but I also have some other things to do in Vienna, where I'm from. And I uh, founded, for example, a, we are preparing a European Citizens Initiative. It's called the Credit Initiative, European Credit Initiative. And this is, for example, about the idea of having a, the possibility to finance economy based on common good and based on need beyond the profit motive. And therefore, we want to change the statue of the ECB, which is part of the European treaties. So have a concrete uh, proposal on a law level, change it or try to change it on a democratic way on a European level. So this is what we are talking about. And uh, in the morning, when we had the first Dome talk here, I, I asked myself, because of everything I hear, I, I heard in, the, in, in, in our group here, I, I thought there is a polarity between the single person and the small group one uh, participant said uh, we need to bring it in the small groups the democracy but we have this this whole europe and we have the whole globe our whole world and how to build a bridge between this individual pole and the 
global pole, so I want to call this, how to build a bridge. And I think maybe from the, from the, the perspective of the whole, we, we can have these ideas and stars to orientate what we have to do in concrete, in very small um, circumstances and in very concrete uh, uh, circumstances where we are responsible uh, in our communities and so on. And th the European level is not the biggest, but it is the biggest already shape itself to something new. And we are now here in Rome and I ask myself why are we here? What what is the, the some some kind of a higher reason which leads us here to Rome? And on this place, Paulus and Petros was in prison and killed here, 50 meters. And and you know and 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 it's a very very it's this power of of Europe and it's this the property and and the European uh, the, the, the Roman law and everything which is still in our in German we say in in uh, in, in Knochen in our bones yeah I don't know in our DNA, in in our DNA. DNA <laughs> yeah and and maybe there is another another light in the future not comes from this but comes from another from another idea which is not property but solidarity in in our com in our economy or what which is not uh, only parliamentarism and, and and power but it's participation and, and direct democracy and the freedom idea for for our thinking and for not be killed if you have the wrong belief and things like this so um, there is there is this red line coming from Rome to our to our present time, but is there also something coming from the future to Europe? This is what I'm asking for, and I think that democracy is the way to go there. But our thinking and our talking to each other in the European public sphere is to find out in what direction we want to go, what comes from the future to our present time. Um, my name is Guido De Simone, uh, I'm Italian from Rome, so welcome to my city first of all. Thank you very much. <laughs> Just quoting the history, that palace there is where the Treaty of Rome, of Rome has been uh, signed. signed. Yeah. Just in there. The point is that uh, the project made at the time was not what Europe is now. It's another thing. And even those treaties uh, are the result of uh, putting together some little parts that were mostly economic, not social yet. The first two projects that have become uh, socially uh, meaningful was the Erasmus and the Schengen Agreement, just uh, that, uh, the treaty that made uh, all people able to pass the borders without problems. Uh, then it has come out also the euro, the euro as a common uh, money, a money currency. But the point is that uh, the original project was another one. Europe was something else. In the mind of the f what we call uh, the people, we call the fathers, the fathers of, uh, they are also mothers actually, but uh, of the European Union or the United Europe, uh, they were thinking of something else that was due to the fact that there was uh, another spirit, uh, due to the fact that uh, they had seen uh, on their own uh, backs, on their own uh, skin, what was able the war to do. Because they, there was a big change uh, in the last two wars in Europe. The change was that uh, before there was a kind of uh, ethical rules, if you want to call that way, that. Uh, the battles uh, field was another one, not uh, where there was the urban area. So citizens were not involved. And somehow this was uh, somehow keeping also citizens away from the power. Something changed when we have been involved in that war and everybody felt that it was absolutely more than logical to prevent any kind of war. 
and that's why we have decided to make this European uh, unity. This is something that cannot be limited to economic problems. Excuse me, I am uh, introducing myself in a more complete way, saying that I am a, a businessman, I'm an entrepreneur, since I was very young. Uh, honestly, I'm very practical on this point of view. I must uh, manage uh, things, concrete resources. And I know how things can become uh, concrete uh, instead of being simply blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, uh, I am an idealist. Uh, and uh, as an idealist, uh, I have uh, a concrete idea of what I have. It has happened to many people having fantastic ideas that they remain there because they have no legs. And legs is this, unfortunately. Because, uh, or at least it's a huge ma critical mass of people that uh, create the, cons the, the, the consistent uh, army able to conquer what they want. Now the point is that uh, as a democracy it's uh, the result of uh, the power in the hands of uh, the people. If this is uh, concrete, okay, if it is not concrete, uh, it's not democracy. When uh, we live in a place where a few people are in, in charge or in power, they have the power in their hands, they do not leave it very easily, this is uh, call it aristocracy, oligarchy, if it is a, a matter of money involved, plutocracy. But uh, anyway, it's not democracy. So we want to talk about democracy. Be, please uh, realize it that it doesn't exist yet. I mean, nobody has been able until now to apply it fully. And that's the main problem. So, as I have studied some years ago, uh, I have attended a master in psychosociology, I have acquired also some uh, additional instruments that made me able so to understand better things I had in mind, how to apply it concretely. So I have been also involved in many other projects like uh, the uh, people that have lost a job and involving them and just uh, convincing them to react to that condition, not to stay there lazy or depressed, but to react to do something concrete. And we have been uh, helping thousands of people in Italy, but uh, it has been something involving hundreds of uh, specialists in this field. As well as it has been important to understand what was bullying, because it was uh, the problem uh, that was uh, creating all social problems in general, because it was people that was abusing the power coming from that experience of bullying. So it is uh, all connected, but the problem is uh, we citizens pay for what uh, is decided politically, because we pay the consequences, we have all the interest to take the, the control. If we do not do it, the problem remains. So how to do it? Well, let's say this. The, there's been a big mistake. In 2002, somebody has tried to write down a constitution of Europe that was made so badly. And unfortunately, that was not so bad at the beginning. The problem is that the commission that has created this text has uh, given birth to this text that has been then uh, analyzed and uh, upset by the national governments. Because this is the rule at the moment. Whatever is made uh, by the parliament and so on must be approved by the commission and uh, also by the council, the European council, that is uh, directly controlled by the national governments. But the national governments are elected by whom? By the single citizens. So they should say, well, we represent our citizens, why we shouldn't do it? There is a problem. They are not elected for the purpose of a European uh, real uh, interest. No, they are elected for the interest of the single country. So the trend of this kind of people is normally to make the interest of the single country over all the others, not of Europe. So they are not able institutionally to create a constitution for us. So, excuse me, there is a problem. Constitution is the synonymous of what? Of a shared law. Something that is shared. So, everybody is uh, understanding what is there, what is uh, consisting in, uh, and uh, able to use it to defend their own interest. So the problem is, uh, who is uh, logically the ones making it? The people. Because if they do not share it, uh, and excuse me, but they have practically offered to us the opportunity to do it, because they have failed.
because uh, in fact the first time that uh, the constitution has been given uh, to a referendum to in France in France or in, in the Netherlands uh, it failed so all the process has been interrupted at this point uh, the problem is that after that failure they have been advised to put it aside because they realized that it was a shame but at the same time they had no solution and instead the only one who can give a solution at this point is us so what is the future of Europe what we want if we want it maybe it will be the Europe we want otherwise uh, it will be again the Europe of somebody else who is controlling us so the other point is uh, maybe we can uh, is there another another turn is better. We have already the second microphone. I have one. Oh, I me? Of course. I put it here. Okay. Um, I will continue. My name is Joseph Joseph Zeisel. I'm uh, one of the founders of this project, European Public Sphere. Uh, I'm one of these founders of this project. Um, I'm engaged in this project, and uh, my company builds these domes. And uh, I'm very happy about uh, that we are here. I have to say, <laughs> because it's not very, um, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not usual that that people come together, talk in these concrete topics together in Europe. It should be usual, it should be normal, but uh, it's not, not yet. And uh, as this dome symbolizes, you will see it here. Uh, we are living now in a network society in a society which is not uh, with uh, strong powerful uh, uh, pillars as uh, Gerd says in the, uh, said in the first dome talk no we are building uh, we are building a dome we are building a object a room which is connected with each other and as you can see uh, these domes and which is I think the main problem of our times is how can individuals strong individuals come together and unite unite without losing their individual skills without losing their national uh, special uh, special uh, skills or um, we talked about this uh, what is in Italian uh, special skill we heard there are very good inventors for example and, uh, and Austria has also I'm from Austria special skills which 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 uh, can be maybe music maybe other things uh, which we yeah uh, put together in this uh, unity and so every team needs strong individuals and it needs a kind of unity I think that's the main problem of our times how can this come together and we see it in this building it it can be it can come together in harmony somehow and that's how we try to build Europe and I'm uh, very curious to hear your answers or questions about Europe. I think also the nationalism is a problem, but it's also a solution, the nations. They are like individuals too in the higher sphere. They are, have their specialties. And for example, in America, they tried to, s to solve this problem with one language and one culture. Uh, and independent from where they come from and Europe there, there is no way how Europe can come to this point we need to invent another kind of community and yes I'm very curious and, and happy that we try to build this quite here with our talks with our concrete proposals and visions and how you said we are building this we want it or want it not like this one, like this one yes <laughs> great that we use the American language to talk in yeah, Europe. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Alfred Groff from Luxembourg, living not far, far away from Schengen. And I, uh, before I tell you what my perspective to direct democracy is, is a few constatations. Democracy physically is in a prison, I see. You see the barriers, you can't come in only with a special permit. So it's not very really open and free to talk about freedom. The second thing, I see democracy seems to interest only men. No women in our democracy talk here. And the third thing is, okay, I think in democracy people have to learn to listen more than they talk. And I think that's a question everyone can answer to himself. My perspective is, I think it, 
to give direct democracy a chance, we need three perspectives to go about it. The first is the economic one. If we don't have enough money for ourselves to feed ourselves, to pay our meal or our bed or a little bit of warmth in our homes, uh, it, it can't work. We will we, we not have our heads ready to talk about democracy. So I'm for an unconditional basic income. I think that's a good source that at least you have a certain level where your needs are met and then we can talk about democracy. The second one is the one from the state. Officially, a state can organize a lot of things like e-forums or real forums, make it possible, give rooms, they can give us information, they can give us insight in budget, they can even ask us to help to do the budget, but that's our only methods. I think that's not enough. The third one is an individual one, a cultural one, where we are free to express ourselves, but we're not all on the level, same level of consciousness. Young people think differently than middle-aged people and differently than maybe with people with more experience. And the conscience level, it might be very different how the, you approach a problem. And I think people don't come by themselves direct democracy. They don't feel concerned. So, as well as official institutions, as the civil society has to bring direct democracy to people, to educate them, young people, to be active in a direct democratic way. And um, I think, depending on the conscious level, the methods will, and the approach must be very different. And we have to find for each level a different approach, because otherwise it's only intellectuals that will participate and exclude a lot of the other people. And then I don't think it has a chance. Thanks. Okay, thanks for the words. and. Every time I'm, I'm talking under the storm, I, I, I know how colorful the world is, how, how different many things, different things. And, um, but in this moment for the discussion, I want to, to say something because next year there is the, the, the elections for the European Parliament. And therefore, we have to look maybe for how, how the construction of, of democracy is in, in Europe, where is the, 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 the power. And on, on which side, and, and we, we as a people, uh, can can take part, only to make a vote, maybe for a national list to go to, to to Brussels. You talk about no, what, uh, where is the power? The Commission and it's not elected the, the the Commission. So, and on the other side, we want more direct democracy. Uh, two two different things, and which way we have to go in the in, 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 in institutions today to go to become direct democracy and hey, how we can find a new um, constitution for the European Union building from the people, from the bottom, not from top down. And so maybe we, 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 when we discuss democracy every time in this moment think about the new elections and the next year. Yeah, so therefore now the micro microphones, if you want to say something. Raban. Uh, out of my view, it's, um, it's a question of, um, yes, of the power in Europe and how to control it democratically. It has very much to do first with the question how much power do we put on the European level and how much do we want to have on the national, on the regional and on the local level. And I think this is one point of concern why so, so many people are very reluctant with, with, with Europe because um, there is a certain tradition in history and there's even done some so, uh, research on that, that power is like a black hole meaning that the more power a system has, the more power it starts to get. The Roman Empire is one of the best examples. And so I really think that um, if we speak of the European democracy, um, we should speak very much about uh, Europe of the regions. We, we saw already that, for example, in Catalonia and all many other regions, there's a strong 
You know, we, we heard this morning that, uh, but I absolutely agree, that um, on the local level, on the city level, for example, democracy works best. So, um, yes, I'm absolutely pro more uh, democracy on the European level. That's why we developed this, we call it the missing link. We, this House Parliament is a tool which um, works all over Europe. It's very simple, you can scale it, millions of people can participate without big cost because people just invite to their homes. And it's a missing link between um, parliamentary um, democracy, direct democracy and consultative democracy. And, um, but still, um, the basic idea is only to debate those topics which really, really, really are good at the European level and to have as less as possible um, questions be debated on a European level but uh, really solved very independently, very, how to say, yes, subsidiary way um, on the local level. to say something to this because I always was um, was thinking of this Europe of regions like you s said before and and two weeks ago or three weeks ago we had the dome talk on the Brenner between Tyrol, North Tyrol and South Tyrol, Austria and Italy and uh, two days later we had a dome talk in Bozen and um, on Brenner for the Tyrolians there it was the most important thing to have this Euro region, Tyrol together. And there was a big issue because they want to do, because of the um, refugees, they want to do a new border. And there was a big resistance against this fence they want to build there. And it's, it's, it's very important to, ha to have this region for them. And then in Bozen, they said, what, what we have to do with this North Tyrolians? Uh, we have we are the region South Tyrol and we have to to be our own next to the Italians and and thing like this so and I think I thought okay this is also the nation level is very abstract and also the region level can be abstract for for the people or can be very various so I think more about this and I'm I'm not finished yet but I think if the integration comes from some somewhere else, not from the geographic level, and we can have the geographic level or the the subsidi uh, subsidi subsidi we subsidi subsidiary levels very flexible, for example, and and also I think it's it's not it's 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 not easy to answer this. For example, also Catalonia. Do they want to be a, a smaller national state next to Spain or is it a Europe of regions? So I think it's not so easy and I think that maybe this is not the, the most important point for Europe, the most important issue. Maybe the most important issue is, for example, these three ideals from the French Revolution and, and how, to manage, how to, to manage this freedom I don't know in English, liberté, égalité, fraternité, or s freedom and, and equal, equali equality and uh, solidarity, for example, to have this as an orientation brotherhood. for hmm? brotherhood. brotherhood. It's but maybe we all yeah, and it's not it's not uh, women are not interested in democracy, Alfred. But in the morning we had a lot mixed round here it's not re representative here so uh, <laughs> yeah I agree with this idea of of the Europe of regions but I I start to rethink it a little bit if this is the most important thing and if it's so easy as maybe we think about it uh, well I think that uh, I have just noted down uh, seven points that have been uh, somehow discussed by all of you. The first one is language. Well, we are talking about uh, language. Uh, well, what uh, language are we using? English? Well, if I go to China, to Russia, to Japan, to South America, 
anywhere in the world, the only way I'm sure that I can uh, dialogue with somebody is English. Because I know French, I know some Spanish, I know English pretty well, because I used it since I was 14. But honestly, I obviously know Italian because I'm Italian. But uh, the point is that uh, if uh, I want to consider my fellow citizens, people in uh, Slovenia, Portugal, Finland, Hungary, how can I dialogue with them in English? But if I wanted to understand what happens there, I cannot read uh, newspaper in my language neither in English because most of them are not and that's one of the point so I raised this point just a few days ago well it was actually a few months ago because it was in May at the in the occasion of the 70th, 70th anniversary of the Congress of the AG where Winston Churchill invited everybody to create a united Europe and just a Referring to that point, uh, I think that uh, uh, it was logical to propose uh, to the conference at the time. It was a, an inner conference, so I have just proposed two things. One was uh, just about the uh, language, uh, common language, uh, which was uh, the second language, uh, according to me, by law, in all the countries of Europe, so that everybody was able to speak each other. We do, we do it actually, we do it, so talking about Esperanto, honestly, it's a, a joke, but not because the Esperanto is a bad thing, it's a nice thing, but it's a, a romantic thing, and no more than that, it practically is uh, really stupid, you not know, considering the point that uh, English is now, they change uh, language worldwide, uh, the new generation in China that do not, uh, did not speak uh, uh, English, now they speak English, the new generation in Russia, the same, in a few day, years, just in a few years, uh, the major part of uh, this population that didn't work and didn't uh, use uh, English at all, uh, now will uh, have an English as uh, the normal language, uh, international language uh, uh, in use. So it's honestly stupid not to do it. But at the same time, if this is concerns the uh, schools, certainly should be also uh, suggested to all the population, uh, to all the, the, ma the media in uh, Europe, uh, to have a translation, at least on the, the website, of the text also in English. Why? Because if I wanted to see what is the point of view of uh, local uh, people there, and I have uh, newspapers uh, reporting them, uh, I can understand what my fellow citizens in the other countries uh, of the European Union uh, think about, are worried about, and so on. So, this is uh, the main point. The second point, women, well, you know what? Apart that a woman finally arrived, but uh, I would like to understand. I would like to uh, s underline one point. Mm -hmm. I have uh, talked in for uh, many years uh, with many people in, in throughout Italy to investigate what was their thought about open primaries. Then uh, this is not the topic now because it's, uh, I would like to give the, the word to somebody else. But uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the most participative ones, uh, when they re realized what it was about, uh, so a new thing, way to think of, you, of uh, politics in a clean manner, mm. many women came out. So uh, the problem is that they don't come out uh, in politics because it's dirty. Mm. It's full of dirty people. Yeah. And this is why I have uh, just commented today that the, the problem is that uh, everybody forget that uh, at the bottom of our heart we have a selfish instinct and if this traffic engine wins, uh, unfortunately, they are what we call bad guys. Uh, we can call them bullies, we can call them abusers, abusers of power, rapers, whatever. But anyway, this kind of problems uh, comes anyway from the same root. People that think that uh, they are afraid of the others and they have a big problem, a psychological problem, and believe me, mm -hmm. it's a serious thing. But these people, unfortunately, mm -hmm. look for power and money. So you will find them mostly where there is power and money. Mm. Big companies, managers that destroy in, in ter, entire uh, populations uh, simply for half, so a, <coughs> half a dollar of change of, of uh, the labor cost. They move uh, and they create a crisis uh, 
for 15,000 people, that has happened in Sri Lanka, in, in, in India, and so, so on. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, the problem is that these guys will be in, in politics anyway, and we must be smart enough to understand how to manage them, how to keep them under control. So, yes. the problem is that without rules, uh, women, granting that there is a real good politics with the capital P, women will not come in politics and there are there are many much more than in the past but uh, expect that when we see a lot of women in the politics is because we have changed really mm. politics in something else mm -hmm. therefore therefore one one point i think we are, we are talking about the, the 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 power for the regions so it's good but we have to think about the bigger rules on the on the, on the steps over maybe on the U european union or on on another yep steps we only can solve the problems on our world together it's the first and in the second we have our human rights yeah and what means the human rights for us and for our democracy think about and at last one i know speaking but please a little bit shorter so that more people can talk together so in this we have some new participants in the in the uh, circle so if you want to introduce you with your name and your a short input and then we come together in the um, my name is and we have to speak loud because this is only for okay. recording. It's no, it's not for okay so i guess everybody understands me yeah. i don't speak english so well but my i would like to introduce uh, a very queer opinion, which is not uh, very largely condivided. Uh, I would like to start from the what my friend said before. That hmm? okay, I'm nobody. <laughs> I'm a planner. Hmm? I'm not a politician. My experience, planner, Alexander Vignozzi. Hmm? Okay, but it means nothing. I'm no one. <laughs> But the most important thing is that I'm a planner and I'm accustomed to build rules for, for the things to work in, uh, in the best way. In my opinion, the rules under which we are accustomed to be governed are old, are out of time, are very minority rules if we think about them from an historical point of view. My friend said that wherever there is power, there is bad people. People who struggle for too much power, too much decision making. That's our problem. Our society does not need so much power. We, not, we don't need a pharaoh. We don't need Napoleon. We don't need Hitler. We need the opposite. Every one of us is a, has a culture, has a decisional capability, attitude. We are not stupid. Our politicians are even more clever than us, but they don't share our own interests. Their point of view is quite different from ours. I say this from my experience of planner, which means working side by side those who, with those who take decision. It means to draw on, on, a, on a map who can build and who cannot. It's giving power, it's giving money to the people. And I see, I notice that this process, this decisional process doesn't take in any account the interest of uh, anybody of us because who makes the profession of politician thinks about what he can do the year after if he can grow up if he can keep the place the chair and so on it doesn't mean about what happens to our sons we if we had to decide about the ground of our property we would decide in the interest in the interest of our children, in the interest of ourselves, in the in the interest of anybody else. 
but in a long time. Politicians cannot do this, are not interested in this. They think about the year later, two years later. This is only one of the many arguments which I could explain to say, to demonstrate how the actual government system, which consists in uh, gifting decisional powers to a category of people is quite wrong. If you look at history, and I would like to just to stop here because it's just a suggestion, I cannot explain everything. But if we look at history, we can see that the electoral democracy, in the way we are interpreting it, is quite minority. Because the whole experience of ancient Greece was different. There was a, a rule of chance, a rule of random choice in people. There was no a political profession as we intended it now. And also, in the uh, glorious and uh, underestimated experience of our free commons in the Middle Ages, which lasted centuries, it lasted centuries. Re Renaissance was only one century, and it was pretty bad as democracy. Much art, but very bad with democracy. The popes in Rome who had, who, who had sons, the, the signori, signorie, was, were not democracy. But seven centuries before, we had free commons where the people who ruled were on one side representative of the art, uh, arts and crafts, which were elected, which were by sort random and on the other side there were the mm, paid professionals of government which tackled the problems from a technical point of view mm? this this uh, alliance was what we find uh, in the palace of, uh, of Siena, the uh, a fresco of good government. This is a government which is represented as a good government, not an electoral uh, power, not an electoral government. This is just a suggestion to start uh, and maybe rewrite our political system and our government system. We have two more, we have two more people or three more people in the round now, in the circle now. And if you say something very short and then we use the last half an hour for looking inside what is what was our experience in this in this don't talk. What did we learn from somebody else and what did we hear which was new or yeah and to 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 get more in touch with each other. So who wants to you you came in here? Okay, I'm at. It's not. It's only for the recording. Ah, you have to okay. Speak loud, very okay. Loud. My name is Megumi Hirayama uh, from Japan. Uh, I'm the promoting Eco Village in Japan. The uh, right after 2001, we had a big earthquake. Then the you know we we lost the you, you know Fukushima incident. Then the people started conscious about our local the autonomy so the we don't uh, our movement is don't rely on centralized government so each uh, community have their own power so reviving the uh, our autonomy uh, so our decision making system uh, through promoting eco village uh, so for example we established our own community school not centralized one. So many, uh, y you may know, the many Japanese commit suicide because they are the uh, mark is low. So we want to avoid. So we set up our own school learning from, for example, I visited Hochschule in Germany or the uh, several different free school. So we are just regaining the uh, power. And at the same time, we are reviving our traditional wisdom 
in Japan. For example, we didn't use the uh, chemical uh, medicine. We used a lot of the natural stones and or herbs that we are reviving our wisdom. Then we don't have to be controlled by pharmaceutical company. That's my movement. Thank you very much. Yeah, my name is um, Niels Jonas. I'm from the city of Potsdam near Berlin. And uh, professionally, I'm doing citizen participation for yeah, 10 years now. Um, and I, I think the, the idea is to, to, sh uh, to share some ideas on how the Europe could be revived. <laughs> maybe this word is necessary. Um, maybe two ideas. I think. Uh, um, you, you said uh, uh, something on the role of, of the English language in, in Europe. I think this is uh, absolutely think this is right. I think we we need some form of shared public space in Europe, and right now we don't really have that. We have that on the on the maybe on the personal level, maybe we know people in some other countries. So it's uh, very private right now, but it's not really an offensive public sphere. Um, I think this is necessary. Um, maybe we need, I don't know, in Europe, newspaper <laughs> in different languages. Oh yeah, uh, call it L'Europe. Uh, I don't know, I'm not an editor. Uh, I think this would be a good idea. Um, another idea, um, I'm, I'm a member of a, of a new party, just for five weeks now or so, and uh, I'm really just a plain member, I don't have any function there. I'm, I'm still trying to understand how this works. And uh, the, the party um, um, is Volt, and um, it, is, uh, it has been founded by an Italian and I think a German uh, guy. They were just shocked after Brexit, and they thought we have to do something. And it's an absolutely pro-European party, and they strive to, um, to build one, uh, one single program uh, for all European countries in which they, they want to, to go for the EU, EU elections next year mm -hmm. for the EU Parliament with one program in all countries, all the same. And uh, one goal they have is to have one um, election law in all Europe. Right now we have, I don't know, 24 different, it, it's absurd. It's really absurd. I don't know. Why, why, as a German and there's a, I don't know, a Dutch guy and he's good, why can't I give him my, my vote? I, I, I don't get it. Um, I, I think that is important. Maybe just one idea. Where are you from? Where are you from? Um, I'm, I'm, I live in Potsdam. This is it's near Berlin, in Germany. Berlin. Yeah. yeah. And this is another thing. Um, sorry. Uh, I think um, I personally re deeply convince uh, uh, Europe of regions. I really think is a good idea. This is be because I didn't say in the first place. I come from Germany. I I think it would be good if Germany would be put away. More regions. <laughs> um, yeah, hello. My name is Martin. Um, I'm I'm working at the uh, at the National Network of Civic Engagement in, in Germany. I'm from Berlin, um, but now here I'm a, a representative of the House of Democracy and Human Rights in Berlin. As I'm a member of the Board of Trustees there, and yeah, tomorrow we make a workshop about Houses of Democracy. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and perhaps on the future of Europe. I would have two ideas concerning what you both said and one thing is exactly that what you uh, was talking about um, uh, the example of newspapers will be so we had uh, the idea to make a European newspaper uh, with news from the European Union but also from other countries of what are good examples there uh, and on the other hand on the, on the other side uh, also a national perspective of the on the European level and this to have as a part of, of the normal national newspapers. So we have a stronger visibility of Europe as a, as a governmental level, like the national level. Yeah, but this is still a dream, um, this idea. So, but this, I, I would also say, would be uh, one option of many uh, to make um, a, a yeah, public sphere, a room, a space to discuss uh, topics for, for perhaps first in, in the national level but European topics discussed in the in the in the national room which then can go into a dialogue with other national dialogues and so on and so on um, yeah well and and the second thing I I would say 
it's a more more perhaps when you, when we look more deeply about you were talking about the rules and when we and I am looking at what are our rules or the structure of yeah so called modern democracy here uh, I think it's a still monarchistic uh, structure there's one man normally a man uh, on top of the state and yeah and this I think is a really it's from the past past uh, century and yesterday we were talking about uh, how the switzer and how they made it in switzerland with the government of um, six people yeah. six people or something and the yeah kind of pr primus inter pares uh, 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 going around who is the 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 who is the boss something or the representative from outside and i i would say we need more like that so that we separate from the history of a of a aristocratic structure monarchistic structure of of uh, uh, of a government and more to a real democratic structure of a, a government so that we can yeah how to say yeah we don't need a man up there we need us with us talking with us governing with us and um yeah it's, it's also a part of getting the state back in the in the society the state is not only anything out there and it's a part of the society and also uh, this is symptomatic symptomatic i think for for europe and because we see the state is something over there also is europe is something behind that state far away than the state and perhaps we c with more democratic thinking about our government structure perhaps we can make it also better for the european um, um, ideal like that yeah. Okay, hello, I'm Emanuele, I'm from Rome, but I consider me like an European and not only European, so a citizen of the world. Mm. This is a, an old uh, way to describe someone who wants to change the uh, world, not only one country or European Union. Okay, my I I could speak about democracy a lot because I'm this is an interest I have uh, since a lot of time but just to share some question the first question is what is uh, direct democracy because I think that in this global forum it's not exactly clear and it's not something like just a polemic uh, way to say it's an um, etymological question. What is direct democracy? And why we, we are um, distinguished, mis distinguished? I'm sorry because I'm very tired and so my English is, what is it? So uh, why we have to s uh, separate direct democracy from representative democracy? Which is the history of this two kinds of democracy. Why we, we don't talk about uh, democracy as one? And I think that uh, if we understand the meaning of democracy in itself, we can uh, find a little solution, a, a first solution. Because democracy, you know, mm, all know, that democracy is something like uh, collective power and this collective power we can share directly or not so the question is uh, if we can share it directly which is the way and why we, we in this global forum we are uh, talking about uh, modern direct demo democracy I don't know I'm not a, a, an, an, hist an historian but I think the modern uh, period is already past. So contemporary direct democracy is something different than di uh, di uh, direct uh, modern democracy, if you want. So which are the forms of direct democracy we have? It's a question. It is exactly a question I put for you. Another question is uh, if we can uh, have direct power with, with which kind of power we have to share 
because uh, actually the question is how many laws we know about our laws in European Union not only the Constitution before someone talk about it in our countries not only in our countries in our regions not only in our regions in our towns how how laws how many laws we know I think not so much and uh, if we can you know we, if we want to share direct power collective power we have to know it to know them a second question how many institutions are democratic really democratic I mean where we can understand laws not only knows laws but understand them and then we can discuss about these laws and then we can decide about these laws because there are more or less the the main processes about public power or collective power so it, that is rhetorical from my part to put uh, this question but i think they are real questions why i'm putting this question because if we are talking about direct democracy we are talking about something about time personal time collective time money someone told uh, before money because we have to pay to take a decision we have to pay to can uh, if we want to have space and time to reflect about laws we have to have money to change institutions mm? it, to do this institution something dem democratic and then institutions culture is there a democratic culture or it's something like a mythical idea of some research uh, university university researcher i think it exists does exist a uh, democratic culture this is a, a little example democratic culture a simulation if you want and then how we can have the way to transform institutions an authoritarian culture and which are the main institution we have to change because we can for example decide about uh, how manage some money about um, how to change uh, um, a uh, website in the uh, in the town of, in the town of Rome that is what uh, in this town uh, they made the the first citizens told us that this is a form of uh, direct democracy it is not okay so it, it is not the main institution we have to change to have direct democracy okay and for example just to say something you know because I, I, I can imagine you know, right? you already know. For example, the, the um, economic system, the top, the higher, highest level of uh, the economic system is something like, it's not exactly not democratic. It's, it's more something like uh, totalitarian or authoritarian, mm? okay? In the same way for the uh, industrial military uh, economic okay so w we have to see which are institution can't allow us to transform this country this society etc etc for arriving a direct democracy in our society so I think that we have to we have to think about a, a real revolution, not only a change of this law, this way to understand law, this way to participate, like something like uh, um, we have to we can express our voices. I, I'm finishing. I'm finishing. Okay, <laughs> but this is this is my point. L the, my point is we have to be clear 
if we are speaking about direct democracy, we are speaking about a, a real revolution and uh, without hypocrisy or without uh, uh, something like uh, lies, we have to see clear. Mm? Our Thank European you. European Sphere project is um, work in progress, democracy, learning democracy. Uh, you can do this later maybe. <laughs> We have to do it, um, we have to learn it. And I learned today if we do dome talks in Italy, we need three hours for a dome talk. <laughs> 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 but it is, it is interesting everything you said, so I, 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 I don't like to interrupt you, uh, but we have these dome talks and, and uh, we have one hour or one hour and a half and sometimes we have two hours and maybe this is not long enough. <laughs> so we have now 10 minutes left. So maybe we can do a, um, a um, put uh, make a prize for who is talking the shortest way in the <laughs> in the uh, last uh, round here. Now everything is okay. It was very interesting and uh, time but bonus. time bonus. Yeah. <laughs> speed, speed, not speed. Pregnant. Uh, not pregnant, um, what do you say in English? Precise and yeah. So, exa yeah. Genau. <laughs> so. Uh, I would like to answer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, not, <laughs> one, not more than one minute. Huh? Yeah, well, okay. I, I start with yeah. only two sentences. Two sentences. <laughs> and I make it very short. It's, it's the yeah? finish. Yeah, you start. So, Europe, the European Union is not Europe. The first thing that's important for me. The European Union is not Europe at all. Yeah? Think about And the second, it's important for me, every time we have to think about the human rights. <coughs> Take this one, please, because we have this. Then I, ju I just want to answer question and make statements because <laughs> <laughs> we are not here uh, to make uh, to make speeches. The first one, it is uh, we are not free. We are not, not even in Italy, because in Italy you can say yes, but you cannot say no. And uh, the only thing you can do, if you found a party or whatever it is, and you are uh, trying uh, to have some uh, concerns, then. It is to have people to vote for you and to get this power. But we are voting and we cannot say, no, we don't want you. We can say, yes, I don't come. And if I don't come and only two people will go, he'll get the power anyhow. Then as you can see, we are not free. Doesn't exist freedom in Italy, okay? You can say yes or not go, but you cannot say no, okay? If we could say no, a lot of people would not be in power in Italy, in Germany, or in any country in the world, okay? Then we are not free, first. Second, second, more than that, not only we are not free, but we are obliged to the power. Because if the power, the power will ask me to go to war, I am obliged to go, because the Italian constitution states that I have to go. Now, you believe that uh, no, okay? You have no, I am sorry, because that is a law, it is not a constitution. It is a law and it is not a constitution. I am the first one of the first uh, 10 Italians which didn't do the military service, okay? But in my time, I should have gone to Gaeta, eh, in prison, okay? But now what has changed is the law, not the constitution. We have a next okay. event here in <laughs> five, five, seven five. minutes. Okay. No, no, so no. please okay. give the microphone, okay. pass it. Then th that is the, the first statement about uh, liberty. The second one it is about Europe. No, only it's two sentences, not two, two sentences. statements. Two sentences. No, no. <laughs> two sentences. You, are, you misunderstood, Jörg. Yeah, it was two sentences, not yeah, two statements. Okay. The second sentence is, it is, <laughs> Europe, it's worse 
than any of other country. So Germany, Italia, or whatever it is. <laughs> and it is impossible to make better because there are politicians. <laughs> so I like to end with three questions, short questions. <laughs> <laughs> the first one is uh, how can we put these maybe abused power or the power from European level, national level, city level, back to ourselves? That's my question. How can we put the power to ourselves? And if we do this and uh, use our power to do what we want, how do we know what we really want? Who do, who do I know what I really want? And how do I know that it's right? my questions. <laughs> Maybe short answer, you never, you, you always know uh, after, if you were right. You never know before. Oh, this was sure your two there. sentences. Yeah, so, sure. sorry. Um, <laughs> Maybe one idea. I think um, economic power and political power is deeply intertwined and uh, we don't the first one we don't discuss today and I think um, we really should do that and I think a beggar and an owner of an online kingdom can never be equals and maybe this is time that we think on uh, well we have a uh, we have defined uh, the lowest level w which w what someone needs to to uh, to live maybe it is time that we define an upper level um, of what someone can uh, can have so a maximum of um, money someone can own i think is i i don't i can't think of any really important reason why someone needs a billion euro because it's fun <laughs> yeah no it's not it's not what's so true um yeah perhaps i i, I would say um defining and it's, it's a good thing because I think you are really right we and it's, it's something what I meant with the monarchistic structure of our political system that we um, if we would define democracy from the beginning as a democracy and without this re uh, separation representative democracy, then we possibly get to a system to a political system to an economical system to a social system which benefits for all of us and which is uh, made for all of us and in which we can all together do the things uh, we want to do. Um, yeah, perhaps to speak with the speak with the Greek antique Greeks from back then. They, uh, as I learned, they said the the, the political the the politics are the um, oh, uh, um, some kind of collective managing of uh, collective topics or tasks, something. I can't better say it in German, but I hope, think you understand what I mean. And yeah, it was, uh, that is politics, our stuff. Uh, we have talked about that a democracy is a device uh, to control power. But I think that we have uh, to think a little bit deeper and to, to, to ask a deeper question. What does power mean and why do we have to execute control over others? That's my question. Uh, I would like to, to answer to this question and to the problem set on Two by... Sentences. Yes, but there's only one. Okay. The, pro the, this, the problem is central, is basic. What is power? Why do we use power? Why do, do we give power to someone? On one side, we, we, we are looking for efficiency. One person is the best decisional si uh, system that one can imagine. But on the other side, we have the risk that these people overwhelms us and makes violences on us and steals our liberty. So let's, let, let's learn from the ancient. How were, we are in Rome. How are the Roman people organized? Normally, they had two consuli, two people, 51, each one. What does it mean that nobody could decide anything if the other did not agree? The, the least efficiency you can imagine. But when there was war, 
one dictator. One dictator. Because you had to decide uh, uh, just on time. You, the, 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 mo the most power you can imagine. One people decides everything. Dictare means give orders. No, nobody can dis de 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 disobey. But six months. Then you can, uh, there is a, a very interesting uh, uh, apologue that one of these dictators was uh, um, agriculture, <laughs> was a, a countryman. And after the six months, he came back to his country work. It's, maybe it's not true, but it's, it's very interesting how it works. So when we give power, we need to join these two main issues. And the solution is very easy. I, I would uh, uh, jump on many passages, but the solution is very easy. You g must be what give power to people who can decide very efficiently, but you must hold the power, switch on, switch off. You uh, like a um, with the microphone. Like an is if you get speech, yeah, switch like an stop, <laughs> like give power. Okay, <laughs> it's finished. Yeah, we um, can do it. The now great, me. It's great, uh, yeah. My two sentences now. Yes, but yeah. the example is any, any corporation. Any corporation yeah. works like this. So my two sentences. Tommaso said we are not free and the European Union is the worst we have. But I think we are in Rome here, you said. Um, Rome and the centuries before to the Egypts and I don't know how long and the, t the time after it was a history of power and was a history also not many times of democracy but monarchy and this project of emancipation this project project of become free the humanity it's very very young it was thousand years of 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 an old age and it's just a few years hundred years two hundred years for this emancipation and we need time and we we have to 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 do step by step on this path okay just uh, two two sentences uh, it's very easy uh, i have given you a business card of the committee that is promoting the problem primary worldwide not only in italy actually we are working for that at the same time uh, behind it there are two websites the first one is gives answer to the first idea. Uh, the constitution will be uh, possible to be written by everybody just by participating. There is a, a preliminary phase that is starting in a few weeks, probably by the end of October, when the website will be with a pre-registration of whoever wants to participate. The second one is a, a, a journal, this international journal in English, Italian and Russian, which was founded by my wife, who is a, journa a journalist, a Russian journalist. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, on that newspaper, as I am the uh, Secretary General of the, of the Association, the Cultural Association, uh, that is the uh, editor, I, the publisher, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you will find all the articles uh, that are announcing all the things and probably giving answers to practically all the questions I had here to the, today. Uh, based on Japanese experience, weakness is power. Right, uh, right after World War II, uh, it seems that the, we were occupied by the USA, but we are not occupied by in spirit. We still kept the, our uh, secret, secret weakness as strongness. So we didn't. So the USA cannot change our constitution. Actually, the, in the in front, it seems that. We followed uh, American policy, and even now, the many people thought the we are following American policy. But in our heart, we are not following. That's uh, maybe secret. And I realized in Europe, for example, PhD folder is much stronger. The degree, what's a degree? In Japan, w we had a prime minister who who just graduated from primary school, but he had the power. And for example, Toyota president. He just, he never been in the university, but that's his, uh, that's his weakness, but weakness is a power. So that's a my Two sentences, yes. Um, 
as I heard from you, uh, I think we need a public sphere in Europe, and I think media is the best way to to produce a public sphere and also these kind of talks around table. Uh, people who are talking with each other don't uh, don't fight each other, mm. <laughs> and um, and maybe my second second sentence is and if we are empowered to decide as people then we get a new identity and then we can say I'm a European because I am I'm deciding with you I'm talking with you so I need uh, I think we, we need to to get a new identity through deciding through the round table talks and that's how we can create a new Europe and the constitutional thing is I think they're the final step yes mm -hmm. I have two observations uh, of what I experienced this afternoon. The first one is, and it's related to what I said at the beginning, why are there not more women? It's because we go about it in a mental way. We think logically, we talk. We have to include other perspectives. We have to talk from our heart. We have to talk from our sensitivity, from our individual spirituality. And that's different kind of talking and communicating. And the second one is, I would uh, say suggest that it's not, to it's uh, don't talk, but I think don't talk should be two minutes of talking for one person and then one minute of silence, because silence will you tell you much more that all life speaks through silence, and we should listen to life. My question ready done. Okay. <laughs> So thank you very much for joining this second dome talk this afternoon and the the dome is still here the dome is still here till tomorrow and to day after tomorrow and we will have a lot of workshops in here you will find it in the program of the global forum thank you very much perfect, perfect. 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 5 seconds thank you <laughs>